हेलो गाइस सो हाउ आर यू वेलकम बैक सो हेलो गाइस सो हाउ आर यू वेलकम बैक सो वी शैल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विद द सेशन ओके सो प्रीवियसली लेट मी वेट फॉर वन मोर मिनट सो दैट व्हेन इनफ पीपल विल जॉइन देन वी शैल स्टार्ट इट ओके गुड इवनिंग हरीश गुड इवनिंग सैमी हेलो वर्षा मुर्गन थैंक यू सो मच हेलो महक कतियाल हेलो सो आई होप माय वॉइस इज क्लियर टू एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग दिलीप कुमार गुड इवनिंग नवजीशा गुड इवनिंग बेंडेक्ट थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर बेंडेक्ट मयंक राठौड़ नमस्ते Yes, um, Amna. This video will be recorded. Okay, as soon as the live gets completed, the video will be automatically get uploaded onto uh, the channel, so you can watch there. Okay, Ahmed. Yes, thank you. Spasiba. Rebecca. Good evening. Yes, video can be heard later also, Amna. video can be heard later video will be recorded but i would like you to join the session because if you get any doubts you can ask in between because in the recorded video i cannot answer your doubts right so as the session is going on you can ask your doubts and i can answer them okay so shall we start yeah are you all ready with your pen and paper yeah yes i i remember bendict i remember you geeta srini good evening good evening good evening everyone himat rahil good evening right let's start guys let's start now so in the previous section right in the previous session we have discussed the muscles of the back the posterior compartment of the thigh okay so in the thigh region we discussed completely the anterior compartment we have discussed the posterior compartment within the posterior compartment i told you there are two groups okay so one is called as the gluteal region good evening hello good evening everyone so one is called as a gluteal region which means this one okay look here see this region is called as the gluteal region okay so let me write it here itself you know this is the back okay in the back we have got this region called as gluteal region okay and this entire region is called as back of thigh what is this this is called back of thigh we have discussed regarding the gluteal region also isn't it but there are some things left we shall finish up that and then we shall enter into back of thigh okay so just a quick review guys of the previous uh, class the last part of the previous class that the posterior compartment is divided into gluteal region as well as the back of the thigh in the gluteal region we have got three main muscles they are called as the gluteus muscles gluteus maximus minimus as well as the medius muscle okay and apart from that we have got some more muscles i told you to remember by a mnemonic pot q right by the mnemonic pot q or or in fact i have told you to remember in this way i think top q top q in the sense top question you know top question t stands for tensor fascia lata o stands for obturator internus right p stands for uh, piriformis muscle and q stands for quadriceps femoris and finally i just told you to remember g that is gemellius muscle uh, there is one is superior another one is inferior these two are called as a twin muscles okay these two are called twin muscles right good evening abhishek good evening babita dawan good evening yes good evening right so i have also discussed nerve supply isn't it i have discussed nerve supply that from from the spinal segments from the spinal segments of l2 l3 l4 we have got a nerve which in turn divides into two one is called femoral nerve which supplies to the anterior surface of thigh 
one is called obturator nerve which supplies to the medial surface of the thigh that is why uh, nerve of the medial compartment is called obturator nerve nerve of the anterior compartment is called femoral nerve isn't it and we have also discussed nerve of the posterior compartment is called sciatic nerve all these things why i am going little bit faster is that we have done these things we have done in the previous class so if someone asks you what is the nerve root of femoral nerve or obturator nerve it would be l2 l3 l4 that was a question in the exam i told you right and i also told you the nerve root of sciatic nerve will be all the way from l4 to s3 okay l4 to s3 so this sciatic nerve guys this is very important here this is very important here uh yara sri harika yes i'll i'll tell you we basically use an app okay we basically use an app and uh, the setting and all so i'll tell you how how we do it but i'll tell you at the end not in the middle of the session okay so venela hi right so back of the thigh just behind your knee just behind your knee whatever area you have it means this one isn't it this region is called as the popliteal region this region is called popliteal region not popliteal fossa popliteal fossa is different thing i mean it is deep inside but region wise if i'm talking this is called popliteal region where you have popliteal fossa okay now within this popliteal region what is happening is the sciatic nerve is dividing into two branches one is called the tibial nerve another one is called as the common peroneal nerve i have already taught you in the previous class that common peroneal nerve is the most common nerve to be injured and injury of common peroneal nerve will lead to what come on comment you comment med booster hello come on comment here i have told you that injury to common peroneal nerve will cause what excellent varsha murgan excellent bendict excellent drop but what drop venela very good any can Sanyasi Pandit, Babeta, Dhrimranul, Huda. I am sorry if if I spell it wrong, but you are right. Kirti Mani, perfect. Sami, perfect. Very good, guys. Excellent. So common peroneal nerve injury causes foot drop. It causes foot drop. Remember this thing, guys. Why I am stressing is definitely you will get a questions on this because at the end of this session of uh, lower limb and upper limb. i will discuss all the nerve injuries that time everything will be an mcq okay so remember it now in the same way guys in the same way tibial nerve i told you tibial nerve supplies your hamstring muscles tibial nerve supplies your hamstring muscles but if there is an injury if there is an injury or compression of tibial nerve you know what will happen compression of tibial nerve will cause what what will it cause it will cause tarsal tunnel syndrome tarsal tunnel syndrome compression of tibial nerve will cause tarsal tunnel syndrome very 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 important question very good dr bentick very good it would cause tarsal tunnel syndrome so these are the things which i have explained you yesterday if i ask you all your hamstring muscles what are hamstring muscles hamstring muscles are the muscles of back of the thigh so if i ask you what is the nerve supply of hamstring muscles tibial nerve if i ask you what are the what is the nerve supply of your calf muscles calf muscles means you know gastrocnemius your soleus right the plantaris all these are the calf muscles so nerve supply of calf muscle is posterior tibial nerve so if you if you instead of remembering the nerve supplies guys if you remember this picture which i have drawn right that sciatic nerve came here it has divided into two one is called tibial and tibial continues as posterior tibial so if you remember this picture definitely any muscle whatever they are going to ask you in the exam regarding the back side then definitely you'll answer it okay picture is very important you know instead of studying textbooks study the pictures they are very important right varsha excellent very good and one more box guys i just want to give one more box and it is not difficult to remember very simple box you just have to remind it there is no concept teaching this box okay so you just have to remind this box practice it again and again remember it as 
L4, L5, S1. Okay, L4, L5, S1. Now the next three spinal segments which I'm going to write, the next three spinal segments which I'm going to write, they start from L5. Okay, they start from L5 and again the next continuing three. What will it, what, what will it be? L5, S1 and S2. The next segments which I'll be writing, they will start from S1. Now you tell me what will it be? Very good. S1, S2, S3. Right? S1, S2, S3. The next three start from S2. So it will be S2, S3, S4. These are spinal segments, guys. These are just spinal segments. What I'm trying to teach you is the root value. Root value of a specific nerve is L4, L5, S1. And what is that nerve? That is superior gluteal nerve. superior gluteal nerve root value if they ask you in the exam you know it is it, this is a favorite question of the examiners they keep on asking root values okay to confuse you to make the exam paper difficult so there are many root values but i'm simplifying it as uh, you know as early as possible now itself because it is very important for you for your exams as well so superior gluteal nerve root value is l4 s5 l5 s1 if I tell superior, the next answer will be, the next nerve will be what? Very good. Very good. It will be inferior. Very good. Varsha, Bendik, very good. Inferior gluteal nerve. Yes, excellent. Sammy, very good. Inferior gluteal nerve. Okay. So, uh, root value of inferior gluteal nerve will be L5, S1 and S2. Now remember this, remember this, remember this mnemonic SIP. SIP stands for not systematic investing plan, it is SIP, simple SIP, okay. S stands for superior gluteal, I stands for inferior gluteal and P stands for, 1P stands for pudendal nerve. 1P stands for what? Pudendal nerve, whereas other P stat stands for posterior cutaneous nerve of your thigh. Posterior cutaneous, cutaneous means it gives sensations. Posterior cutaneous nerve of your thigh. So remember this box, guys. Many questions will come. Believe me, trust me. Many questions will come from this. Okay, just remember this box. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Very good. Right. Now, one, one very important thing is that yesterday, yesterday, I told you about triomuscles, isn't it? I told you about triomuscles, right? Backside, in the gluteal region, you have got a set of muscles. So, in this set of muscles, I have told you three of the muscles are called triomuscles. So, can anyone tell what are these triomuscles? Yes. Come on, you answered yesterday, every one of you answered very well yesterday. Right, no worries. So, triomuscles are three. Excellent, Vanilla, very good, very good, very good. Not superior and inferior gamilai, they are not triomuscles, they are twin muscles, Praveen Kumar, they are twin muscles. Excellent, Sami, Sanyasi Pandit, everyone, excellent. Gluteus medius, minimus, tensor fascia lata. These three are called as triomuscles. What are these three triomuscles? Gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, right? And tensor fascia lata. Tensor fascia lata. These three are called as triomuscles. Now, what I am trying to teach you, what I am trying to teach you is very simple, guys. You know, superior gluteal nerve, superior in the sense, superior in the sense it must supply, you know, many number of muscles. That is why it is given a name superior. 
right actually based upon the location it is given but you know to simplify it i'm telling you superior so someone who is superior he can control many of them more than two people so superior gluteal nerve superior gluteal nerve supplies your trio muscles nerve supply for gluteus medius minimus and tensor fascia lata is superior gluteal nerve okay what is inferior gluteal nerve supply see gluteal means it supplies gluteus only but already two gluteus are finished medius and minimus are done now inferior gluteal nerve will supply which one yeah excellent very good very good very good very good so inferior gluteal nerve will supply your gluteus maximus gluteus <laughs> it is maximus okay it is maximus right now 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 look here guys look here gluteus maximus what is the nerve supply you know i know gluteus medius minimus also you know i know right we 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 have also know the glue the nerve supply for what tensor fascia lata but we should also know the nerve supply for obturator and remaining muscles right so we have got obturator internus we have got quadriceps femoris isn't it so let us see now let us see now a nerve that is supplying to obturator internus is called nerve to obturator internus a nerve that is supplying to quadratus femoris is called nerve to quadratus femoris very simple so nerve to obturator internus it supplies what obturator internus muscle next nerve to quadratus quadratus femoris supplies to what quadratus femoris muscle right then what about gemelli you told me at the end there are two gemelli superior and inferior both of them are called twin muscles you told me then what about them see the upper one supplies superior gemelli superior gemellus lower one supplies inferior gemellus tell me guys is this difficult to remember if you practice it once or twice don't you think you'll remember it yeah is it easy or wrong is it easy or difficult easy very good see guys one very important thing i want to tell you is that everyone can study you can study i can study everyone whoever get whoever has got a low gpa everyone everyone can study but only few can revise because not no i mean most of them don't have a patience to revise and i'm telling you one thing revision is more important than studying so if you have studied for sitting about 8 to 9 hours and if you haven't revised for a week again you have to sit for 8 to 9 hours so revision is very very important i'm telling you revise it revise it and revise it right so these are the important things which i have to tell you clear so from these are there any mcq sir you have told me very good information it is very easy but are there any mcqs really yes there are mcqs there are mcqs which are repeated look here seventh question who will answer which nerve supplies superior gemellus which nerve supplies gemellus inferior muscle gemellus inferior is supplied by which nerve yeah gemellus inferior muscle is supplied by which nerve excellent pravin adil adil hussain not a adil how are you not a it is c everyone everyone excellent guys now jisha perf it is not obturator internus obturator internus supplies your superior gemellus okay sanyasi pandit everyone is right mehak bendik varsha perfect so answer would be c which of the following nerve supplies gluteus maximus these questions i did not make it they were repeated in the previous exams so which of the following nerve supplies gluteus maximus
Excellent. Now, don't think Maximus, it is major, uh, might be superior nerve might have been supplying this. No, it is inferior gluteal nerve. Okay. Very good. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Bhavya Jain, excellent. Sanyasi, excellent. Cricket speaks, perfect. Ashta Rajpal, perfect. You are right. Tell me this one. Gluteus medius is supplied by. Very good, Dikshita. You are right. Gluteus medius is supplied by Sriharika, Praveen, Varsha, all of you are right. Very good. Very good. Now I am going to ask you, superior gluteal now also supplies? Also supplies what? Uh, don't write the names of the muscles, just tell me that term called as. It supplies all three muscles, together you call it as what? Very good. Trio muscles. Excellent, guys. I'm really happy. I'm really happy for you. Excellent. All of you are right. Right. One, one important thing I want to tell you is that one very important clinical point. Very good. Mehnas Begum. Very good. Vaiba Sahu. Very good. Excellent. Naujisha. Very good. So one important point I want to tell you is that, guys, if you look at the femur, If you look at the femur bone, all of you know this is tibia, this is fibula. Simple thing guys, wherever fibula is present that is the lateral side. Wherever fibula is present that is the lateral side. It means this is the lateral side, this is the medial side. Wherever fibula is present, that is the lateral side. But one very important thing I want to tell you is that this is called as lateral femoral condyle. Lateral femoral condyle. Lateral femoral condyle. And this is called as medial femoral condyle. Medial femoral condyle. For example, if I have to show it to you here, right? So I hope all of you can look at this. All of you can look at this. See here. Right. So this one, this one is called as lateral femoral condyle. This is called medial femoral condyle. Lateral and medial femoral condyle. Okay. Lateral and medial femoral condyle. Now what I'm trying to tell you is that all the way from the lateral femoral condyle, to the tibia bone on the medial side, to the tibia bone on the medial side. Okay, before this, let me tell you one very important thing. Before this, let me tell you one very important thing. Look here. You know that between the tibia and the fibula, sorry, between the femur as well as, between the femur as well as the tibia, you know, there is a lot of pressure that is impended upon tibia. For example, this is my... Uh, femur, this is my tibia. So whenever I'm walking, whenever I'm running, right, whenever I'm jumping, the femur bone, femur bone exerts a lot of pressure onto the tibia. So tibia, the articular surface of the tibia can be damaged. So for that reason, the nature has provided us two very little bit cushions, pillow-like cushions. Okay, they are called shock absorbers. So what are these shock absorbers? Very good, Rathod Anjali, very good which is on the medial side is called as medial menisci, which is on the lateral side is called as lateral menisci. So this is called as medial menisci and on the other side we have got the lateral menisci. So these menisci, they act as shock absorbers. Shock absorbers. Now the interesting thing is that these menisci are like a piece of cake, right? Two pieces of cakes. Now don't you think these menisci can flip away like this. These menisci can flip away in this way. They will flip. So for that reason, nature has also provided us a line, I mean a ligament, okay? A ligament that is attaching two menisci. So that, for example, I am the ligament, I am catching both the menisci and I am pulling them together. This is called as transverse ligament because it is transverse, right? So this is called what? This is called as transverse ligament. Okay, fine. So, why are you telling us this? Why am I telling you this is that? 
there is a specific muscle not cruciate not cruciate cruciate muscle cruciate ligament i'll tell you i have prepared something for you to perfectly explain you how does a cruciate ligaments work i'll tell you in a minute right when i will when i'll be discussing the knee joint and all i'll be telling you but right now concentrate here okay there is a specific muscle that attaches all the way that starts from the lateral femoral condyle and comes all the way and inserts to the tibia and inserts to the tibia medially like this so near the lateral menisci there is a support support in the form of a muscle and this muscle is called as popliteus muscle popliteus muscle what i'm trying to tell you is that guys listen very carefully don't write don't comment now right what i'm trying to tell you is that popliteus muscle is located towards the lateral menisci so that lateral menisci is safe but on the medial menisci there is no support there is no muscle that is the reason why most common injuries of the menisci are of medial menisci why because there is no popliteus there keep this thing in mind okay so very very important point i have told you very very important point medial meniscus injuries menisci injuries are more common than lateral menisci injuries okay medial menisci injuries are more common than lateral menisci injuries why why what is the answer because of no popliteus where on the medial side no popliteus on the medial side okay right so did you understand the explanation there is a little bit delay in the chat so i cannot answer to all of you but did you understand the explanation guys very good very good another important question another important question now why are you discussing randomly because we are about to close this lower limb topic so we are discussing all the mcqs which are about to come in this topics in fact there is leg muscles also we have to discuss right leg muscles and hamstring muscles we'll discuss that but regarding the thigh region and all these are the mcqs which i'm discussing another mcq which they'll ask you is what are the structures that pass through greater sciatic notch greater sciatic notch now what is this greater sciatic notch all of you can see here right let me put it on my black shirt over here so that you, you can see here now yeah right in this way yes you see this this is called as greater sciatic notch what is this this is called greater sciatic notch okay this is called greater sciatic notch so there are a lot of structures there are a lot of structures that are passing under from greater sciatic notch to lesser sciatic notch okay there are some structures not some there are only three structures that are passing from the greater sciatic notch through the lesser sciatic notch now these these structures are very important guys you if whenever i'm writing this you have to pin this okay write it in a paper pin it somewhere and read daily so these structures are very important so how do you remember pin you have to pin it p for pudendal nerve pudendal nerve i for internal pudendal vessels i for internal pudendal vessels okay and n for nerve to obturator internus obturator internus question for you obturator internus supplies superior gemelli or inferior gemelli first come on i just told you 
Excellent, excellent. Keisham, Deeksha, Sammy, Sanya, C. Pandit, all of you are perfect. You are right. You are right. They supply to the superior gamelas. Right. So we are done with the discussion of the gluteal region. So what all MCQs have discussed now? What all things have discussed now? They are more than enough, guys. Trust me. Okay. They are more than enough for your exams. So they will cover up. I have, I have gone through many books. I have collected all the MCQs, all the important points and I'm delivering it to you right now. So this must be more than enough for you. Okay. Let us switch on to the next part. After the gluteal region, the next part was what? Next part was back of the thigh. Next part was back of the thigh. Now after discussing this back of the thigh, we are going to encounter a very beautiful topic guys. Okay. Back of the thigh. Now in the back of the thigh, we have got four muscles. Okay, so how do you remember these muscles? Remember it as my tab. Remember it as my tab. And by the way, what is the nerve of back of the thigh? What was the nerve of the back of the thigh? Excellent. Sciatica. Sciatic nerve. Excellent. Sciatic nerve. Perfect. Later on, sciatic nerve. Ahmad, it is not, yes, you're right. You're right, Ahmad, sciatic nerve. Later on, sciatic nerve will divide into common peroneal, TBL. So that is a different story. Right. So, perfect. Rajeshwari, Rathod, Anjali, all of you are perfect. So what are these muscles? What are these muscles? What are these muscles are? One muzzle, M stands, M, stands for membranous. Okay. That is called as half membrane. Half membrane is called what? Semi membrane. Semi membranosus. Semi membranosus. T for tendon, right? It is also called half tendon. Half tendon means semi tendinosus. Very good. Very good. Semi tendinosus. And what does A stand for? A stands for adductor magnus. I told you in the medial compartment there we have got adductor magnus, right? So I'm not telling complete muscle of adductor magnus, just the posterior part. Okay, posterior part. For example, uh, this is my leg. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side. This is the medial side. This is the lateral side. Okay. Now adductor magnus comes like this all the way. It comes, it will take a turn back. So only the posterior part the posterior part of adductor magnus. Only the posterior part of adductor magnus muscle. And finally, B stands for biceps femoris, right? Not biceps brachii, it is biceps femoris, okay? So long head of biceps femoris. Excellent. Dr. Bentek, Asta, Rajpal, Noman Ali, you are perfect. Everyone is perfect. Very good. Okay. Can you, in, can you please tell me an MCQ which can be asked here? Yes. The MCQ which can be asked is, what, which of these four muscles is called as a hybrid muscle? Yes. Anyone? Which of these four muscles are called as Hybrid muscles. Yes. <laughs> Tell me. Which of these four muscles are called hybrid muscles? Excellent. Sri, excellent. Dr. Arun Rathod, perfect. Very good. Adductor magnus is called as hybrid muscle. I will tell you what is hybrid muscle. Hybrid muscle, Kirtimani, very good. Aniken, perfect. Perfect. Rathod Anjali, perfect. So, what is hybrid muscle? Is see, a, is a, one muscle is supplied by a single nerve. Okay. One muscle is supplied by a nerve, only single nerve. But if a muscle is supplied by two nerves, then you call it as hybrid muscle. See, for example, 
एडक्टर मैग्नस वॉज विच कंपार्टमेंट गैस टेलमी एडक्टर मैग्नस नोमन अली थैंक यू सो मच दिस इज अ परफेक्ट न्यूमोनिक विच हैव गिवन मी टेल मी एडक्टर मैग्नस इज ऑफ विच कंपार्टमेंट वेरी गुड मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट एडक्टर मैग्नस ऑफ मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट देन द नर्व ऑफ मीडियल कंपार्टमेंट वॉज ऑप्चुरेटर नर्व सो एडक्टर मैग्नस इज सप्लाइड बाय ऑप्चुरेटर नर्व ऑप्चुरेटर नर्व एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग एडक्टर मैग्नस इन द पोस्टीरियर कंपार्टमेंट ऑल्सो so posterior compartment nerve is what sciatic nerve sciatic nerve so this adductor magnus is supplied the posterior part of adductor magnus is supplied by both obturator as well as sciatic nerve that is why you call it as what hybrid muscle is everyone clear yeah is everyone clear guys Yes, Anya Sipandit. Posterior part of adductor magnus, the adductor magnus muscle will take a turn back there, okay, and it will attach to your tibia. Right. So in the starting itself, we have discussed, we have discussed anterior thigh muscles, we have discussed posterior thigh muscles also, right? So anterior thigh, and now we have discussed posterior thigh muscles. just for a quick recap guys i told you the anterior compartment is responsible for two functions what are those two functions flexion of flexion of what and extension of what extension of what and flexion of what flexion of anterior compartment was responsible for flexion of hip excellent sanyasi not extension varsha ex not extension flexion of hip very good venula and extension of knee so opposite of anterior will be posterior so if anterior is flexion of hip then posterior will be what posterior will be flexion of knee and extension of hip extension of hip so make a clarity about these two things okay because in the exam in the anterior group there are many muscles the vastus muscles and all in the posterior group also we have discussed gluteus group of muscles we have discussed back of the thigh right so they can give you any muscle and ask their function so if you remember this small box then definitely you will understand and by the way guys all the muscles of this back of the thigh they are called as hamstring muscles hamstring muscles you know uh, why these are called as hamstring muscles is that so in in the previous in the during the greek times where there were wars okay war over the kingdom and all so whenever you do any kind of war over a kingdom so all the people there all the soldiers there they will become your slaves so what 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 the kings used to do is that they used to put those slaves uh, within the jail okay they used to have a separate jails there so they they used to put them in a separate jail but jails used to not be sufficient so they used to leave those slaves or soldiers outside but they are not allowed to cross the kingdom so that is the reason why they used to cut these muscles this cutting of these hamstring muscles this procedure is called as hamstringing okay cutting of these back of this thigh muscle so that the person will become crippled so he cannot walk he cannot run further so this is called hamstringing procedure okay but anyways they won't ask you this in the exam don't worry about that i can guarantee you right so we are done with the discussion we are done with the perfect discussion of this now let us discuss the arterial supply arterial supply all of you guys don't write down anything now don't write anything okay so let me draw it and explain you don't write anything
this is the anterior side all of you know now you are very well in observing the posterior side as well you even know that this is the posterior side right posterior side and another important thing another important thing is that uh, let us say let us say this is your tibia bone and this is your fibula bone tibia and fibula okay and and let us draw that between the tibia and fibula between both the bones you have got a membrane like this and this membrane is called as interosseous membrane okay this membrane is called interosseous membrane here also you have got a membrane and this is called as interosseous membrane now why should i know this you should know this because you are learning right now the arterial supply now everything starts from the abdominal iota so this is your abdominal iota abdominal iota will come all the way down and divide into two branches now these two branches are called as common iliac arteries these two branches are called common iliac arteries now this common iliac artery will in turn divide into two branches one is called as external iliac another one is called as internal iliac okay so this is called internal iliac artery and this is called external iliac artery external iliac artery okay now this external iliac artery i have told you previously isn't it i have told you previously that from anterior superior iliac spine till pubic tubercle you remember this was your anterior superior iliac spine and here you have got your pubic tubercle connecting both of them you have got a ligament please comment down what is this ligament guys this ligament very good perfect this yes very good excellent this ligament roy the old gamer perfect aniken perfect this ligament was called inguinal ligament so what what is my intention to teach you this is that this external iliac artery this external iliac artery continues till the inguinal ligament now once this external iliac artery crosses the inguinal ligament now it should be called as femoral artery now it should be called what it should be called as femoral artery femoral artery okay now don't write anything now this femoral artery will come down all the way it will come down all the way on the anterior side of the thigh on the anterior side of the thigh it will make a small hole it will make a small hole right it will pierce the anterior side of the thigh and that small hole is called as adductor canal and that is called as adductor canal okay now it will make a hole it should come out from one or the other side so from where it will come exactly at this position it will come from the posterior side like this it would come from the posterior side so the femoral artery is coming from the posterior side and this is called as adductor hiatus adductor hiatus okay this is called as adductor hiatus all of you are clear till now yeah any doubt all of you are clear very good excellent excellent i have also i have also already, already told you yesterday that i mean I, I don't want to go in detail guys i don't want to go in detail i don't want to you know extend this as long as possible see here i told you that here we have got a muscle called sartorius here we have got a muscle called adductor muscle the tip of the sartorius and adductor we have got a canal called adductor canal right i have told you this thing right so so look here the same thing the same thing this was your inguinal ligament inguinal ligament this was your sartorius here there was your adductor muscle right both of them together they formed a small opening like thing this is called as adductor hiatus now adductor hiatus will have a continuation like this this is called adductor canal what is this called it is called adductor canal and adductor canal will go 
onto back of the thigh and it will open. Adductor canal will go onto back of the thigh and it will open like this. Right into this popliteal fossa. Understood this? So, this was your femoral triangle. Femoral triangle. And this is called as your adductor canal. This entire thing is called as your adductor canal. And this opening over here, this is called adductor hiatus. So, adductor, if I can tell you like this, that adductor hiatus is opening into what? Popliteal fossa. Popliteal fossa. Okay. Sir, if adductor hiatus is opening into popliteal fossa, then this picture is wrong here. Yes, this picture is little bit wrong. This, this opening on the back side should be little bit below. Exactly at this region. Then why did you draw it wrong? Because if I, if I draw that one there in the popliteal fossa, that will be a messed up situation. Because down you have got bones. I can't explain the arteries. Okay. I hope you understood. Right. So, what I am trying to teach you, what I am trying to teach you is that, this femoral artery, still it is called femoral artery, okay. Now, this femoral artery will come down all the way and it will enter into where? It is entering into your popliteal fossa, popliteal fossa. Once the femoral artery enters into popliteal fossa, now you call it as popliteal artery. What do you call it as? Popliteal artery. Popliteal artery. Excellent. Very good. Everyone are right. Excellent. Popliteal artery. Why I am telling you this? Because later on I will tell you contents of popliteal fossa. That time you should know what is popliteal artery. So this popliteal artery guys, it divides into two branches. Okay. This popliteal artery, it divides into two branches like this. This is one branch and this is a second branch. Now, what is the name of this branch over here? The name of this branch is tibio peroneal trunk. Tibio peroneal trunk. The name of it is tibio peroneal trunk. Remember from now onwards, from now onwards, fix in your mind, peroneum means lateral compartment. Peroneal compartment means lateral compartment of leg. Lateral compartment of leg is given another name that is called peroneal compartment. If I tell you any muscle by name peroneus, let us say peroneus tertius, peroneus brevis, peroneus longus, it means it is of lateral compartment. Okay. So, lateral compartment means, look here, tibio peroneal trunk. It means it gives two branches. One is called tibial branch, one is called peroneal branch. So, one is called tibial branch which goes like this down, another one is called peroneal which goes laterally because I told you lateral compartment, okay. So, this is your peroneal branch and this one is your tibial branch, okay, tibial branch. Now, look here, the next artery. This artery is coming like this all the way. It is coming like this all the way. And look what a beautiful thing it does. It will make a hole again. This artery is making a hole again in the interosseous membrane. And where it is coming out? Look here. It is making a hole. And this artery is coming out from the anterior side like this. Clear? Now, what is the name of this artery? Yes, the name of this artery is also called as tibial artery. Sir, you told me already there is a tibial artery back of the leg. Now, you are telling me there is a tibial artery in the front of the leg. So, front you call it as anterior tibial artery. Back you call it as posterior tibial artery. Very simple. So, this is called anterior tibial artery. This is called posterior tibial artery. Very good, guys. Very good. So, this is an arterial supply. Sir, I don't want to remember the picture. Can you please tell me another way to remember? Another way to remember is, simple thing, abdominal iota gives out two branches. They are called as common iliacs. 
common iliac in turn gives two branches one is called external iliac another one is called as internal iliac external iliac continues down as femoral artery femoral artery will make a hole it will go back into the popliteal region and you call it as popliteal artery okay and popliteal artery will again divide into two branches okay one branch i told you it is called as tibio peroneal trunk tibio peroneal trunk and the other branch is called as anterior tibial artery that is why it is making a hole on the back and coming on the anterior side so is this easy to remember yes this is easy to remember if you want to remember like this you can remember it if you want to remember in a picture way pictorial representation you can even remember in this way right are you clear before i start discussing regarding the leg are you clear with this concept yeah no are you clear very good guys thank you so much mehak katyal rajeshwari yes everyone thank you right so let us start discussing regarding the leg region okay let us start discussing regarding the leg region now the discussion will be leg the discussion of leg will be so beautiful guys really so beautiful look here simple thing when i'm cutting down the leg i mean when i'm making a transverse section of a leg so i will have two bones one is called tibia and other one is called as fibula bone one is called tibia and other one is called as fibula so in the center like this i will have a bone in the center like this i will have a bone this is called fibula and here i have got a bone like this that is called tibia that is called tibia and i have also drawn here that between the tibia and between the tibia and fibula these pink color lines what are they this is called as interosseous membrane i told you isn't it now the same thing i'm drawing between the tibia and fibula i have got interosseous membrane what will be the outermost layer guys the outermost layer will always be the skin outermost layer is always the skin all of you sri harika perfect you are perfect she has mentioned some uh, arteries and all so please look at that excellent right so guys don't write anything now whatever explanation i'm giving you right now your entire leg part all the arteries all the veins all the nerves all the muscles everything is depended upon this single picture don't write anything just look at what i'm drawing here so obviously the outermost layer will is going to be your skin right after the skin simple thing guys everyone know this superficial fascia and after that we have got the deep fascia so this is called as superficial fascia okay the next one the next one you have got is the deep fascia the blue color one right the blue color one which i'm drawing right now is your deep fascia the blue color one is your deep fascia all of you have to remember this thing either it might be the upper limb or the lower limb it doesn't matter the deep fascia is the one which will divide the leg or the hand or the thigh or whatever it is it, it is the one which is going to divide into compartments in the thigh also we discussed deep fascia of thigh is called as fascia lat i told you which divided into compartments even in the leg also the deep fascia is the one which is going to divide the leg into different compartments okay it is going to divide into different compartments sir why did you draw the tibia bone so close to the skin all of you palpate on your leg you can feel the bone right on the leg you can feel the bone so that is your tibia 
So can I tell tibia is just subcutaneously located? Yes, tibia is subcutaneous in nature. That is why I have just drawn just beneath the skin. Right? Right, anyways. So deep fascia, deep fascia divides like this. Look here, guys. There is one division like this. Right. Now deep fascia of the thigh is dividing the uh, sorry, deep fish of the leg is dividing the leg into how many compartments? Three compartments. How many compartments? Three compartments. Wherever fibula is present, wherever fibula is present, I told you that is lateral side. So fibula is here, then this will be the lateral side. Then this should be the medial side. Right? And wherever the heading I have kept, this is the anterior side. Excellent, Varsha. Next, this is the posterior side, right? This is the posterior side, right? Now look here. We have got a compartment here. What is the name of this compartment? Yeah, this compartment is called as anterior compartment, anterior compartment. And this compartment is called as lateral compartment. Lateral compartment or also called as peroneal compartment because I told you lateral compartment is called as peroneal compartment. So this is called as peroneal compartment and these two, I'm sorry, yes, these two are called as posterior compartment. Now posterior compartment is in turn divided into two. What are these two? This is called as superficial posterior compartment and this is called as deep posterior compartment. Okay, superficial posterior compartment and deep posterior compartment. Now look here very carefully. Look here guys, all of you, all of you now stop commenting, just look whatever I am teaching you. Anterior to tibia, which artery I have guys, on the anterior side of the tibia bone, what is the artery which I have drawn there, tell me. Varsha, excellent, Benedict, very good, tibial but what, anterior or posterior Benedict, Dr. Benedict. And you can, it's not posterior tibial artery, posterior tibial artery is posterior, anterior tibial artery is anterior. Sanya Sipandit, excellent, very good. So, here I have anterior tibial artery. Wherever I have anterior tibial artery, there I will have anterior tibial vein. So, anterior tibial vein. Okay, same to same scenario. Behind the tibia bone, behind the tibia bone, I will have posterior tibial artery, posterior tibial vein, right? So this will be posterior tibial artery, posterior, I am sorry, let me change the color, posterior tibial artery, posterior tibial vein, in a minute you will know how important this picture is, posterior tibial artery and posterior tibial vein, okay, fine. In the anterior compartment, the nerve, the nerve of anterior compartment is DPN. DPN stands for deep peroneal nerve. You know, there are exceptions as well. I know it should be in the lateral, but you know, DPN stands for deep peroneal nerve. Deep peroneal nerve. Now, nerve of posterior compartment. You tell me, when I was dis discussing the nerves, when I was discussing the nerves, I told you common peron uh, sciatic nerve will come and divide into two common peroneal nerve and down you have got what tibial nerve isn't it so you have got TN TN stands for tibial nerve TN stands for tibial nerve excellent guys TN stands for tibial nerve then in the lateral compartment what is the nerve I have got SPN, SPN stands for superficial peroneal nerve. Superficial peroneal nerve. Okay. Now, you can uh, have a doubt here. What is that doubt? Sir, you told me anterior tibial artery, posterior tibial artery, anterior tibial vein, posterior tibial vein. You also told me deep peroneal nerve, right? Tibial nerve. Then in the lateral compartment, there is only one nerve. You did not mention any artery and vein. Why? 
because in the lateral compartment we don't have any artery we don't have any vein then how the muscles of lateral compartment are going to survive how they are going to survive is that in the lateral compart the lateral compartment artery and vein are located in the posterior compartment itself what i'm trying to tell you is that in the posterior deep compartment only i have got peroneal artery i have got peroneal vein peroneal artery and peroneal vein both of them are located here it will give it will extend its branches into the lateral compartment okay peroneal vein also will extend its branches into the lateral compartment so can this be an mcq guys can this be an mcq yes in the lateral compartment what is lacking peroneal artery and peroneal vein from where they are coming they are coming from the deep part if you if you really observe this picture guys one more interesting and wonderful thing you can see in the posterior compartment we have got superficial deep in the superficial compartment i did not even discuss a single artery vein or a nerve then how is the superficial compartment going to survive how it is going to survive is the posterior tibial artery gives its branches like this okay the posterior tibial vein also gives its branches like this and the tibial nerve also gives its branches like this it means naturally in the superficial posterior compartment there are no neurovascular bundles so the only compartment in our body which lacks neurovascular bundle this was asked in aims 2008 this question was asked in aims 2008 they asked which compartment in your body lack nvd neurovascular bundle nvb right which compartment lacks nvb that is the posterior superficial compartment posterior superficial compartment of what of leg posterior superficial compartment of leg okay posterior superficial compartment of leg lacks these muscles did you understand whatever i've just taught you just look at it for 2 minutes guys before i you know mess up all the things in our mind just watch at that for 2 minutes and then i shall continue the muscles did you understand you're right roy you're right compartment syndrome roy is asking that roy is asking here that if in case there is compartment syndrome you know what is compartment syndrome for example let us say my tibia and fibula got broken down i'll go to an orthopedic doctor what will he do he'll take an x-ray and finally he'll he, he'll confirm that you have got a both bone fracture both bone means tibia and fibula fracture then he'll put a slab for me right while putting a slab you cannot compress it you cannot uh, tie the pop so hardly to the patient why because when you're tying it so hardly for example when i'm compressing my hand too much what is happening all the structures within my hand they also get compressed the muscles get compressed muscles muscles in turn compress arteries veins so that is called compartment syndrome compartment syndrome happens in the deep posterior compartment not in the deep superficial compartment okay if there is compartment syndrome which compartment will suffer deep posterior compartment will suffer right let us start now so i was telling you after after the discussion of leg i'll give you a break okay so i was telling you that leg has got three compartments three compartments one is called as the anterior compartment okay can can you watch my video
yes guys is the connection clear everything okay right everything okay so anterior compartment i have got lateral compartment and i have got posterior compartment within the posterior compartment i have two one is called as deep another one is called as superficial another one is called as superficial okay now let us also discuss in the thigh also you remember we discussed functions of anterior compartment medial and posterior compartment here also we shall discuss what is the function of anterior lateral as well as posterior compartment now anterior compartment is responsible for dorsiflexion see for example this is my leg this is my foot okay dorsiflexion means whatever muscles are located here right all these muscles are attached to my leg so for example let us say i'm holding these muscles i'm pulling it up when i'm pulling it up my leg will also raise you see here i'm pulling it up again i'm pulling them when i'm pulling them i can elevate my foot i can elevate my foot right i can lift the foot up this is called dorsiflexion it means on the dorsal side of the foot i'm flexing it there is a decrease in the angle decrease in the angle is called flexion increase in the angle is called extension i am doing dorsiflexion right so anterior compartment are responsible for dorsiflexion of foot now i don't care about the posterior compartment because opposite of anterior will be posterior so posterior compartment will be what posterior compartment will be plantar flexion very good right dorsiflexion is a true flexion mohammed musa rabbi yes you are right plantar flexion plantar flexion yeah it is extension actually i'll i'll tell you what is that i am i'm not uh, confusing everyone here step by step i'll decode everything okay now when it comes to the lateral compartment this is the leg this is the foot now look here i can elevate like this this is called levation i can turn my foot like this right see whenever you visit a temple first of all you wash your hand, uh, wash your legs right a temple or any uh, pilgrimage or any any place where you worship you first of all wash your legs so how do you wash you rotate your leg like this you do dorsiflexion you do plantar flexion and all the way you will wash it so this action is called this action is called levation so those muscles in the lateral compartment here they are called as levators so levation levation you know the function if i ask you a nerve what is a nerve supplying anterior compartment you will tell me that it is a deep peroneal nerve because i have already explained here if i ask you uh, what is the nerve that is supplying uh, the deep posterior compartment you will tell me now artery also you will tell me vein also you will tell me so you are done with the arteries veins and nerves of the leg let us now discuss just the muscles okay right let us draw a big man's foot five right so this will be my medial malleolus and this is going to be my lateral malleolus okay lateral malleolus now look here one very basic thing i want to tell you is that guys what is the anatomical position of my body for example if i am putting my hands like this and if i am leaning backward whatever you can see me this is called my anatomical position so it means all this part is the ventral part and the muscles which are located here are called as flexors they are responsible for the flexion of my body they are responsible for what flexion of my body and all the muscles on the back of my uh, limb upper limb are called as extensors when i flex they are responsible for extension so here flexion this is extension exactly the same thing what i have told you is opposite in case of lower limb in the lower limb whatever you can see right now directly from an anterior view they are all extensors back side back of the thigh back of the leg 
all whatever I have, they are called flexors. So upper limb opposite is lower limb. Okay. I'm not making you to, you know, mug it up guys. Everything has got a reason. Okay. See, your thumbs are equal to toes. Okay. In anatomical position, your thumbs are facing outwards, but your toes are facing inwards. Why? As the development is happening, as the development is happening, what will happen is that as the baby is developing like this, right, the upper limbs, they will turn to 180 degrees outside and the lower limbs will turn to 180 degrees inside. That is why your great toes are inwards, your finger toes are outwards, right? So this is a simple thing. You need not remember this thing, right? Anyways, so in an anatomical position, so this is an anatomical position which I have drawn here. So here, anterior compartment muscles will be extensors or flexors, tell me. Yeah. Very good, Varsha. Extensors. Because I told you it is opposite of upper limb. Right? It is opposite of upper limb. I hope all of you understood. Right? All of you understood? Very good. Extensors. Right? In the upper limb, back side they are extensors. In the lower limb, front side they are extensors. Just the opposite. So, 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 so look here, guys. One muscle I'm drawing here. Now, this is the muscle that is coming down all the way and this muscle is located anterior to tibia. This muscle, which I am drawing down all the way is located anterior to tibia. So, can I call this muscle as anterior tibial, or tibial muscle? Anterior tibial muscle or tibialis anterior muscle, right? Because it is located anterior to tibia. Next, Roy, I will come to that. I will come to that muscle. Now the next muscle comes all the way like this and attaches to your great toe. Now listen very carefully guys, these muscles are little bit tricky, I am trying to you know decode it. So please concentrate it, don't write anything. Right. So anterior group muscles are called extensors I told you. So this muscle is called as extensor muscle. Right. In Latin what do you call this finger guys? This finger in Latin is called polex. This is called polex. That is why all the muscles are named as polysis. But the toe finger you call it as hollex. Toe finger you call it as hollex. The upper limb finger you call it as polex. Okay. The, the toe you called as hollex. So it is attached to the great toe. So it would be extensor, hollysis, and it is very long. So it is longest. Simple. Right? Next. There is another muscle that is coming all the way down like this. And it is attaching to all these digits. You know, all these are called digits. In the same way in the foot also, all they are called as digits. So it is attaching to all the digits. And by the way, you should not forget, we are discussing right now extensor group muscles. So this is extensor. It is attaching to all the digits. So digitorum, digitorum and these tendons are very long. So longus. Tendons are very long. So they are longus. Extensor digitorum longus. Okay. Whenever you think of extensor digitorum longus, there will also be extensor digitorum brevis. Extensor digitorum brevis. Clear? Tibial is anterior. Extensor hollysis longus, extensor digitorum longus, extensor digitorum brevis, and last muscle, guys. This muscle is located complete laterally. You know, this is lateral side. Complete laterally, it is located. Okay, it is laterally located. So this is called as laterally. If it is there, then I should start by a name called what? I should call it as. I should start with a name of lateral compartment. What is that name? Peroneus, very good, but not longest, not longest. This is called Peroneus, Peroneus tertius, Peroneus tertius. Why it is called Peroneus tertius, I will tell you. Remember it as Peroneus tertius. So how many muscles we discussed guys? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have discussed 
फाइव मजल्स सो वी आर डन विथ वी आर डन विथ द एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट वी शेल डिस्कस द लैटरल कंपार्टमेंट एंड टेक ए ब्रेक ओके एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंट वी आर डन लुक एट द लैटरल कंपार्टमेंट लुक एट द लैटरल कंपार्टमेंट right somewhat you know so this is the lateral compartment let us say now in this lateral compartment i have got two muscles now one muscle or one muscle all the way comes and attaches to the toe if it is attaching to your great toe it has traveled a long distance so you can very easily very happily call it as longus but it is located on the lateral compartment lateral compartment is also called mm -hmm. as peroneal compartment so peroneus longus peroneus longus right whenever there is longus there will be brevis whenever there is longus there will be brevis so there is another muscle coming like this all the way again lateral compartment peroneus brevis okay so first muscle peroneus longus second muscle peroneus brevis third muscle is called tertius Three for tertius. Third muscle is called tertius, which is located little bit in the lateral, little bit in the anterior. That is why they call it as a third peroneus muscle. In Latin, three you call it as tertium. Okay, that is why it is called peroneus tertius. And what is its function? Ele elevation of the foot. Okay, elevation of the foot. Medical lovers, good evening. Right. So till here, before I give a break. did you understand everything guys did you understand everything let us take a break for 5 minutes did you understand everything after the break we shall be discussing an excellent concept on knee joint i'm i i'm telling you guys So whenever i discuss the knee joint i will tell you n number of clinical conditions i'll show you the photo also right so clinically we shall relate and i'll tell you all your mcqs will be covered all your concepts will be cleared okay last explanation there is nothing sami simple thing lateral compartment we have got two muscles peroneus longus peroneus brevis another one is little bit see there is a muscle here that is not completely lateral completely anterior it is in the middle between lateral and middle so you call it as tertius uh, so brevis is comparatively short but not short yes comparatively it is short comparatively with the longus it is short you are right so so okay we shall take a break for 5 minutes
right so we are done with the discussion <coughs> We are done with the discussion of the anterior compartment. We have done with the discussion of the lateral compartment. We now we will discuss the posterior compartment, right? Posterior compartment is again of two. You know this very, very well, right? You know it very, very well. All of you are with me. Yes. Hello. Yeah. So, posterior compartment is very good. Posterior compartment audible. Yeah, fine. So, posterior compartment is of two. One, we have got the superficial muscles. The only compartment which has got no neurovascular bundle by itself is superficial and we have got the deep muscles. Superficial and deep. Okay. Superficial and deep. Superficial muscles, remember it as gossip. Gossip, you know, what is gossip? You basic, We basically make gossips. GSP, gossip. What does G stand for? G stand for gastronemius gastronemius muscle okay g stands for gastronemius muscle and within this gastronemius there are two heads one is called as the lateral head of gastronemius another one is called as the medial head of gastronemius lateral head as well as medial head and there is a solo muscle called as soleus solo muscle called as soleus and p stands for plantaris okay so, can you please, can you please tell me any important things about this? Yes, definitely I'll tell you. So, the important thing here is that guys, let us say this is your femur bone and this is your beautiful tibia. Tibia bone. Now, right now I'm showing you the posterior aspect, okay? Posterior thing. Posterior aspect because we are discussing the posterior muscles. Now, we have got a muscle, we have got a muscle in the center like this. Now, why it is important, I'll tell you. We have got an MCQ as well. We have got a muscle in the center like this. Okay. So, the muscle in the center here, a single muscle, I told you, that is called as soleus. That is called as soleus. And we have also got two more muscles. See here, I'm drawing it with pink. Two more muscles like this, here and here. Not two more muscles, this is actually a single muscle, but in fact it has got two heads. I told you, it has got a lateral head and a medial head. So let us say this is lateral head, this is medial head. So lateral head of soleus, excellent, Benedict, Dr. Benedict, excellent. And we have got medial head, okay, lateral head and medial head. So the soleus, the lateral head and medial head of gastronemius, so all these muscles guys, all these muscles together they form a common tendon and this common tendon comes down all the way comes down all the way and and down there you have got your bone here what is this bone where you rest where your foot mainly rests on this bone right so i mean this one so here you have got a bone like this this one this is called as calcaneus this is called what calcaneus so all these uh, tendons together they join to form a common tendon very good vanilla and it is attached to the calcaneus and this tendon this tendon you call it as achilles tendon you call it as achilles tendon right so this is an mcq what is the use of Achilles tendon? Achilles tendon is useful for ankle reflex. Achilles tendon is useful for ankle reflex. You know, you check ankle reflexes in a patient, right? So, Achilles tendon. Now, if I ask you what is the root value of this, it would be S1. It would be S1. Very good. Tendino Achilles. Very good. Excellent, guys. Excellent. 
excellent very good excellent right now now look here another important thing is that someone have already asked me what is called triceps sure triceps sure now this triceps sure is actually consisting of two muscles one is called the soleus muscle another one is called the gastrocnemius muscle within the gastrocnemius you have got lateral head you have got medial head so completely how many you have got one you have got two you have got three all these three together are called as triceps sure is that really important to know yes that is very important to know because in your 2014 exam they have asked this question that which of the following muscles which of the following muscles are included in triceps sure so options are a b c and d one is called gastrocnemius another one is called as popliteus another one is called as extensor hollicis longus extensor digitorum longus so this was a question that was asked in 2014 fmg okay so what will be your answer not 3 not 3 shubhas sumitra you are right s1 yes that was s1 yeah but what is the answer for this obviously it will be gastrocnemius i want all of you to remember this guys and now as i am teaching you it would be easy for you to remember but you know small things you forget in the exam you, that is the reason why i am telling you to remember it again and again okay revise it now out of these three muscles soleus muscle is called as the peripheral heart is called as a peripheral heart okay now why this muscle is called as a peripheral heart why this muscle is called as a peripheral heart is look here let us say let us say this is your beautiful heart okay uh let us also tell that you have got this muscle like this okay and this muscle is called as your soleus muscle let us say this is your soleus muscle now i i'm just telling you one uh, very important thing okay okay bendig i'm sorry so i'm telling you one very important thing that this soleus muscle is somewhat like this okay one side it is open it is somewhat like this in the center in the center this pen whatever is running in the center this is nothing but a vein this is nothing but your veins okay so your veins all of them they join together to form inferior vena cava you know inferior vena cava takes the blood from the lower part of your body so all these veins they join together to form inferior vena cava which will attach to your right heart okay all of you know that now you even have got your beautiful lungs over here okay now if soleus muscle while walking while running when your soleus muscle will actively contract when it will contract what will happen the vein inside is squeezed so when the vein you know veins the blood in the veins moves retrogradely from down to the top right from bottom to the top so when soleus muscle contracts all the blood whatever is there inside is very fastly rushed into your right atrium from your right atrium it enters into your right ventricle from the right ventricle the blood goes into your lungs from the lungs it comes to the left atrium from the left atrium it enters into your left ventricle and from the left ventricle whatever blood is going out is called as your cardiac output so can i can i tell like this the guys can i tell like this that can i tell like this that the more the soleus squeezes the more blood enters into the right side of the heart the venous return this is called venous return the venous return is more the more the venous return the more blood enters into the lungs the more the blood enters into the lungs the more left heart pumps the blood outside so what will happen eventually the cardiac output is increasing it is increasing the cardiac output it is increasing the blood pressure and that is the reason why you call it as what peripheral heart and obviously by chance guys there is a condition called deep vein thrombosis dvt deep vein thrombosis okay 
deep vein all of you are right roy you have got a perfect explanation subhas uh, sumitra the simple and perfect explanation we have got a dvt called deep vein thrombosis mostly this is seen in patients who are obese mostly this is seen in patients who are smokers and most importantly who are long term bedridden they can't move their legs they can't move their body so what will happen is that minute clots will be formed within the body like this minute clots will be formed so all these clots are called as thrombus now this thrombus will undergo embolism that is why you called as thromboembolism it will go to the heart from the heart it will go to the lungs once it enters into the lungs once that thrombus enters into the lungs right there won't be any oxygen perfusion that is the reason why you call it as pulmonary embolism then you call it as pulmonary embolism if you don't take care of this patient immediately he might die okay right so another question uh, brajesh shripal good evening another question is that another question pe is pulmonary embolism yes another question is that for tendon grafting surgery for tendon grafting surgery you know in the knee we have got uh, two ligaments guys uh, anterior cruciate ligament posterior cruciate ligament right so not only that when whenever there is any kind of injury to the ligament when that ligament is cut right it is when it is damaged you have to replace it so you will replace with the help of this tendon that is the reason why you call it as tendon grafting surgery you know i have told you three muscles what are these three gastrocnemius soleus and plantaris if you look at the shape of plantaris guys there is very interesting shape this is plantaris muscle but this plantaris muscle has got a very long tendon like this it has got a very long tendon so this is called as a short belly of plantaris muscle short belly of plantaris muscle which has got a long tendon so you basically use this tendon you cut this tendon you do grafting right you apply it to the part either acl or pcl tear in case of acl and pcl tear you take a part of this tendon and apply it there okay for tendon grafting surgery which muscle do we choose that is a very very important question clinical question that is your plantaris that is your plantaris yes roy roy has already told here that it is long and very elastic yes it is long and very elastic and that is the reason why we use this plantaris dr bendick you are right so guys we are done with the discussion of we are done with the discussion of muscles of the thigh muscles of the leg right so are you all clear now i'm going to enter into a super interesting topic that is knee joint you will find it very 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 useful and very interesting guys so i want your response before i start that knee joint are you all clear with this Naman Jain, what was not clear to you? Right. So, let us enter into the topic. Knee joint. All of you guys be ready with this topic. Very, very important. Now, in this topic of knee joint in this topic of knee joint i just want to tell you one very important thing this is your femur what is this this is your femur bone okay and and you have got this is your tibia bone and side you have got here side you have got this is called as your fibula tibia and fibula so wherever there is fibula that is the lateral side so this will be the lateral side this will be the medial side okay and all of you know two important things that medial side we have got this called as medial menisci we have got something on the lateral side that is called as lateral menisci 
so these two menisci they can slip away so i'm putting them together with the help of a ligament called which is transverse so you called as transverse ligament now another thing can happen you know what another important thing can happen now both of them both of them either can slip rightward like this either they can slip to the left right they can slip to the right or they can slip to the left now what should i do i should attach something there now what will i attach look here on the medial side i'm attaching something like this right now this is called as medial collateral ligament what is this this is called medial collateral ligament in the same way on the lateral side also i'm attaching something like this this is called lateral collateral ligament lateral excellent sri harika dr bendek you are perfect medial collateral and lateral collateral ligament okay there is an additional ligament there is an additional ligament on the medial side can anyone tell what is that name of the ligament yes yes right no worries there is an additional ligament that is located now this additional ligament here this is called as coronary ligament what is this additional ligament called coronary not acl shubhash i'll tell you about acl okay this is called coronary ligament coronary ligament and by the way most important thing we forgot what is that we have got something called as capsule this is called joint capsule we have got joint capsule within this joint capsule you have got synovial fluid we have got hyaluronic acid in this i am not going into physiology now so this is synovial fluid within this okay why am i telling you this because joint capsule is very important later on i will tell you right something called as popliteal cyst or baker cyst okay that time this joint capsule you'll understand it so this is the basic knee brajesh your right coronary ligament okay for example uh, let us say this is the knee joint right so this will be your this will be your knee joint this is the knee this is the place where your patella is located isn't it this is the place where i'm sorry i have to turn it like this right so this is the place where your petal lies located for example for example if i'm turning if i'm turning this laterally like this if i'm turning this laterally like this now how does the picture look this is the place where all the important mcqs are going to come so this will be your femur this is your tibia okay so if you want little more clear this is the thing okay so this is your anterior side this is your posterior side now exactly here guys exactly here i have got patella so this is my petal over here what is this this is my petal over here right now what i'm trying to teach you now look here very carefully don't write anything now don't write anything right here i have got an open space above the petal above the petal i have got an open space like this now this is called as your skin okay above the petal i have got an open space that is called bursa bursa is present above the petal i call it as supra petalar bursa what is this called this is called supra petalar bursa okay okay very good this is called supra petalar bursa 
below the petal also i have got a bursa this is called infra petalar bursa infra petalar bursa next in front of the petal also i have got a bursa like this this is called pre petalar bursa i hope you understood why this bursa are important because most of the time we kneel down we fall down so the impact is on the knee itself so we have got pre petalar bursa all these bursa they act as a cushion they act as a cushion okay fine so why are you telling me this why am i telling you this is that you know for example when you kneel down and mop the floor the housemates usually do that you kneel the, the housemates they kneel down and they mop the floor so when they kneel down and mop the floor what is happening is that this pre petalar bursa comes in contact with the floor so when it is coming in contact with the floor again and again they'll work two hours here two hours in the next home two hours in the neighbor's home so when they keep on working total day the pre petalar bursa is under high tension it will inflame okay it is under high tension high intensity so this pre petalar bursa will undergo inflammation so this pre petalar bursa inflammation is called as pre petalar bursitis the other name which is given for this is housemaid's knee housemaid's knee so from today onwards if anyone asks you what is housemaid's knee you have to tell them that simply it is because of the inflammation of prepetalar bursa because of the friction because of the friction okay now next important thing when you are kneeling down not only your prepetalar bursa sometimes even your infrapetalar bursa also gets inflamed why have you seen in a church you know in the church those who do the prayers they are called as clergymans those who do the father who does the prayer he is called as a clergyman he does not kneel down completely right so he will kneel down in such a way that his infrapetalar bursa is touching the floor so infrapetalar bursa also will be inflamed so inflammation of infrapetalar bursa is called yes infra petal dr bentig you are right it is housemate's knee this is called infra petalar bursitis or other way other name is called as clergyman's knee clergyman's knee so two mcqs got covered two mcqs two mcqs see guys this they will either ask you in anatomy or in your future we will study a subject called orthopedics even there also they'll ask you this question okay so clergyman's knee housemate's knee these are the two most common things okay fine next important thing next important thing is that very simple very simple look here on the tibia on the tibia bone right all of you know on the surface of the tibia here you have got a bumpy elevation all of you can see here a small bumpy elevation here so this bumpy elevation is called as tibial tuberosity i told you this is called tibial tuberosity so this is called as tibial tuberosity i also told you previously when i was discussing thigh muscles if you remember or not your quadriceps muscles all these quadriceps muscles right they will have a small tendon this is called quadriceps tendon i told you previously this quadriceps tendon passes over the patella and finally it attaches to your tibial tuberosity i told you this right so this is called as your quadriceps tendon quadriceps tendon once it passes over the patella you should call it as patellar ligament and patellar ligament attaches to tibial tuberosity okay fine you told me this then why are you telling me again dr bentet in orthopedic it's been asked before yeah it is asked it will be asked in orthopedics thank you for mentioning here so dr bentet is already telling that this question has been asked and yes it is asked even i do remember it i think so but whatever it is when i'm kneeling down all the way all the time when i'm kneeling down all the time you feel pain in your legs why because your tibial tuberosity is touching the floor if your tibial tuberosity touches the floor if the friction is happening again and again your tibial tuber your tibial tuberosity gets inflamed isn't it 
if there is infection in tibial tuberosity, that infection will continue till patellar ligament. And from there, the infection will go up, go up till the quadriceps tendon. And from there, the infection will go up till the quadriceps muscles. This condition is called as Osgood Sclater syndrome. This condition is called Osgood Sclater syndrome. If someone right now asks you what is Osgood Sclater syndrome, simply tell them inflammation of tibial tuberosity. Inflammation of what? Inflammation of tibial tuberosity is called as Osgood Sclater syndrome. Did you understand these three things, guys? Osgood, Osgood, housemates, and clergy, me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Shubash, you are right. Good evening, Vipin. Good evening. All of you understood, guys, before I, you know, pop up the next thing. So we have covered three MCQs already in the knee joint, right? All of you understood? Thank you. Very good, Vanilla. Very good. Right. Now, another important thing I want to tell you. This is tibial tuberosity, you know, femur tibia, tibial tuberosity. Here I've got three muscles, guys. Three muscles get inserted here. Okay. What are those three muscles? See, here I've got a muscle like this right now this muscle is called as sartorius i told you in the starting itself sartorius is a s-shaped muscle which comes all the way and gets attached to the tibial tuberosity right another muscle like this another muscle here this is called as gracilis graceful legs i told you it will attach to your leg only if you remember third muscle also i told you that is semi tendinosis semi tendinosis so all these three muscles guys what i'm trying to tell you is that <clears throat> let us say this is my tibia okay this is my tibia there are three muscles here attached to the tibia three muscles attached to the tibia so let me write down the name this is very important worth discussing semi tendinosus gracilis sartorius semi tendinosus gracilis and sartorius okay they are three muscles attached like this now to the tibia now when i take these three muscles you can see a space here there will be a bursa here okay i'm closing these three muscles like this you see i'm closing these three muscles now i'm removing one by one when i'm removing one by one just beneath these three muscles i will have an open cavity here that is called as pes anserine bursa. So I will have a small bursa like this here, a small bursa here, right? And that is called as pes anserine bursa. Pes anserine bursa. Okay. So let me also show you. Right. So is this picture clear for you guys? Look here, exactly on the tibia here, see I have got a small bursa like this, this is called pes anserine bursa. You know, when you are kneeling down, even this pes anserine bursa gets inflamed and this is called as pes anserine bursitis. Pes anserine bursitis. You know, if pes anserine bursitis happens, you know, how does it look? I'll show you. You see this picture? You see this picture where the patient, you can see a small swelling here, right? This is nothing but called as pes anserine bursitis. You see the swelling there? 
ऑल गुड आर यू ऑल अंडरस्टैंडिंग वट एवर एम टीचिंग यू गाइज या आई एम नॉट लुकिंग एट योर रेस्पॉन्स हियर प्लीज टेल मी कवाड़ नितेश यस वीकली ट्वाइस एटलीस्ट आई हैव आई कम टू द लाइव बेस्ट पार्ट कैन यू प्लीज रिपीट सिंपल थिंग सिंपल थिंग बेंडेक्ट सिंपल थिंग सी दिस इज टीबिया द बोन विच आई एम शोइंग यू यर ऑन द टीबिया इट सेल्फ आई हैव गॉट थ्री मजल्स लाइक दिस अटैच ओके सो इफ यू वॉन्ट मी टू शो आई विल शो यू हियर इट सेल्फ ओके सो लेट से दिस इज टीबिया okay now on this tibia on this tibia i have got three muscles like this attached okay three muscles like this attached now when i am removing these three muscles here i have got what pes anserin i have got a bursa called pes anserin bursa and inflammation of this pes anserin bursa is called pes anserin bursitis okay very easy thank you thank you roy thank you that means a lot to me thank you so much now now i am writing one thing here 100% guarantee question hundred percent guarantee question guys whatever i am writing now it will be hundred percent guarantee question and that is nothing but about your popliteal fossa that is about popliteal fossa okay look here very carefully don't write anything don't write anything this is the buttocks so when i have drawn buttocks it means that i am drawing the posterior side of your thigh right the posterior side of your leg so this is the leg region so where will be the popliteal fossa the popliteal fossa is this one okay that is your popliteal fossa but before that look here i i already told you i already told you that cruciate ligaments venella i'll tell you just after this i'll tell you the cruciate ligaments okay i already told you that there is a muscle like this there is a muscle which has got two heads can anyone tell me a muscle with two heads yes what is this muscle which i'm drawing with two heads first gastro gastro is stomach not not gastro i mean i understood what you are about to tell gastrocnemius this is gastrocnemius okay very good isha isha kor very good thank you so much right next important thing is that you have got another muscle like this you have got another muscle in this way look here this is back of the thigh muscle so this is called as semi membranous membranosus semi membranosus and this is called as your gastrocnemius okay next you have got another muscle like this you have got another muscle like this right this is called biceps femoris biceps femoris okay let us say let us say this is the medial head medial head of gastrocnemius let us say this is the lateral head of gastrocnemius medial head and lateral head very good bente it is part of hamstring muscle so there are four muscles like this this is semi membranous this is biceps femoris okay and we have got medial head of gastrocnemius we have got lateral head of gastrocnemius all these four muscles together they have formed a triangle here right so they have formed a fossa a fossa here this fossa is nothing but called as a popliteal fossa this fossa is nothing but called popliteal fossa okay so first important question what they are going to ask you is what are the borders of popliteal fossa so what will be the borders of popliteal fossa guys look here look here if i am dividing this entire area one is superior one is inferior 
so superior medially superior medially i have got semi membranosus muscle where is semi membranosus muscle located supromedially okay where is biceps femoris located look this is biceps femoris this the border biceps femoris which is forming it is suprolaterally suprolaterally and the down part is what is the down part inferior part okay so let us say this is this part is inframedially yes semi membranosus sachin yes semi membranosus is supramedially and this one is infralaterally infralaterally now look here guys everyone don't comment just look here okay someone is asking me what are the borders of popliteal fossa the borders of popliteal fossa are supramedially we have got semi membranosus supralaterally we have got biceps femoris inferior medially i have got medial head of gastrocnemius inferior laterally i have got lateral head of gastrocnemius so all these four heads all these four borders form form what the popliteal fossa question number 1 done what is the second question second question is that can you tell me what are the contents of popliteal fossa what are the contents of popliteal fossa are first important thing i have got i have got this violet color thing which i have drawn here this is called popliteal artery i have already drawn the arteries and told you once the femoral artery enters into the popliteal fossa it is called popliteal artery so this is called popliteal artery this is called popliteal artery right and after that just medial to popliteal artery i have got this vein over here and this is called popliteal vein i'm not just writing look here i'm i'm not just writing here just look here that from the medial side to the lateral side okay from the medial to the lateral first you have got popliteal artery next you have got popliteal vein and if you remember guys if you remember nerve supply i told you that you got a nerve here what is the name of the nerve can anyone tell me you got a nerve like this what is this nerve this nerve is called as sciatic nerve very good i already told you that sciatic nerve will come down like this right sciatic nerve will divide into two look everyone look here sciatic nerve is divided into two one branch comes like this and the other branch comes like this right what are these two branches now you will tell me i'm not writing it you will tell me what is this branch named yeah not not nerve not nerve very good excellent excellent one is called tibial nerve and the other one is called as common peroneal nerve you remember it right same things we have discussed here look here common peroneal nerve and this is called as tibial nerve common peroneal as well as the tibial nerve very good guys very good so this will be my common peroneal nerve and this is going to be the tibial nerve tibial nerve common peroneal excellent dr bendek it is food drop michael your uh, michael it is not tibial is anterior it, that is different shubhash sumitra you are right you are right so these are the contents these are the contents so sir it is very difficult for me to remember this diagrammatic representation can you write it yes one is popliteal artery then i have got popliteal vein then i have got tibial nerve then i have got common peroneal nerve simple even if you remember this single box that is enough if you want to remember in the form of an picture it's your wish 
right now i'll be discussing now i'll be discussing anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments before that before that i want to tell you one thing that from this discussion 100% you will get a question in your exam at least one question you will get 100% sure okay now you understood this shall i start cruciate ligaments Shall I start the cruciate ligaments? Sri, Sri Harika, you are perfect, you are right. right now thank you thank you so much let's start now see guys cruciate ligaments what are cruciate ligaments are first thing i'm telling you i'm telling you the basic concept uh, my left hand is a femur this is tibia femur is attaching to tibia okay femur is attaching to tibia there are chances see whenever i'm walking i will walk like this isn't it i will walk like this there are chances that this femur can slip forward, can slip backward. Tibia can slip forward like this, can slip backward like this. It can slip forward like this, it can slip backward like this. So to prevent this slipping, slipping means displacement. To prevent this displacement of femur and tibia, what, what are there is that in between the tibia, in between the femur and tibia, I have placed, I have placed a set of ligaments like this. This white thing is a ligament. So there will be one more thing, one more ligament here. So these ligaments won't let both of my bones to displace anteriorly nor displace posteriorly. They are called as cruciate ligaments. I will also teach you now how to diagnose it guys. You Right now, you will even understand an MRI. I will teach you how to diagnose with an, in, with an MRI. Okay. So let me draw that. This is your femur bone. Okay, this is your tibia bone, tibia bone, this will be your fibula bone, okay, fibula bone. Whenever, there are two types of ligaments, one is called as anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament. How to remember, remember it as lamp, L-A-M-P, lamp, okay, and one more thing you already know that this is called as lateral condyle of femur this is called as medial condyle medial condyle okay medial condyle now what is this center region called this center region is called as intercondylar region intercondylar region even above also you have got intercondylar region okay see this this center region whatever is there this center region is called intercondylar region. Okay. So here also this center part is called as intercondylar region. Center part is called intercondylar region. Now, lateral cru anterior cruciate ligament starts from the lateral condyle. It starts from the lateral condyle and comes anteriorly and attaches to the anterior surface of the tibia. It is attaching to the anterior surface of the tibia lateral anterior from lateral condyle to the anterior surface of tibia this is called this is called what this is called anterior cruciate ligament because it is coming anteriorly right this is called anterior now exactly how it is attached and what is its function i'll teach you now look here guys right this is the posterior side this is the posterior side. In the posterior side, I have got, this is called as a medial condyle, right? This is called as a lateral condyle. This is medial condyle, this is lateral condyle. On the lateral condyle, I can find a red color strip. This is nothing but your ligament, okay? Look here, I am lifting it up. This ligament comes anteriorly and it is attaching anteriorly. Are you clear? From back it is coming anteriorly and it is attaching anteriorly, right? 
Did you understand this? Yes. Let me look at your comments. Right. This is antigen. Now, for example, just for example, I wanted to move this tibia anteriorly like this. See, I am moving this tibia forward. I am pulling to my left side. When I am pulling to my left side, I can't pull it. Why? Because of this ACL. Now, look at the femur. I am trying to pull my femur backwards to my right side. But I cannot pull it. Why? Because of the ACL attached on the back side. So, can I, can I write it down? Can I write it down that ACL is responsible to prevent anterior displacement of tibia and posterior displacement of femur? It will prevent that. Can I write it? Yeah? Did you understand guys? Did you understand my explanation over here? I tried maximum to explain you. I am not sure you understood it. But please tell me, did you understand? Yeah, very good. Thank you so much. So it prevents prevents anterior displacement of tibia and posterior displacement of femur. Posterior displacement of femur. Okay. So once if I have learned anterior, then opposite of anterior is posterior. The same thing. So what does M and P stand for? M stands for, look here. It starts from the medial condyle. And what does P? P means posteriorly. It attaches posteriorly. It starts from the medial condyle, comes like this, and it attaches to the posterior surface of the tibia. Okay? So let me show you that thing. So, this part, this is your posterior cruciate ligament. Now, in the posterior cruciate ligament, you can see that this is called as the medial condyle and this is called as the lateral condyle. So, back side it has attached medially and did it come anterior to tibia? Yeah. Did it come anterior to tibia? No. It has attached posteriorly itself. It has attached posteriorly itself. Clear all of you? So, what will be the function? Opposite of, opposite of ACL will be, opposite, will be PCL. So, what are the functions of ACL? Anterior displacement of tibia and posterior displacement of femur. The opposite of this will be PCL. Opposite of this will be PCL. So, if you remember this mnemonic, L-A-M-P, very, very easily you can answer this question, guys. Very, very easily you can answer this. Let me show you that thing now. Let me show you it on MRA. Look at this MRI. Look at this. See, this is your femur. Okay. The excellent Bentect. This is your tibia. And what is this bone, guys? What is this bone? Okay. Let me use another ink over here. What is this yellow color bone? Yeah. If you answer it really, you are great. What is this yellow color bone? Excellent. Petella. Yes, this is petella. Now, don't confuse guys. Don't confuse sir. Then what is this one? What is this part? Don't confuse. That is nothing guys. That is a fat. Okay. That fat you call it as hoffa pad. What do you call this fat as? This is called Hoffa pad. Hoffa pad. Do, don't uh, look at that. Okay. Now, where is ACL and PCL? ACL comes anteriorly, PCL stays back only. See, this dark color thing you can see here. Again, I'm rubbing it. Look here. This dark color thing, this is called as your PCL. Then, what is ACL? Look here. This part is your ACL, guys. This part. This is your ACL like this. This is your ACL. Okay. This is your ACL. And back side you have got PCL. Clear? Now, now, this is a normal MRI. This is a normal MRI of knee. But how will I find out whether 
there is a tear in the acl or there is a tear in the pcl simple thing in an mri if you see the lesion hyper intense hyper intense means bright white in color if there is any ligament which is appearing bright white in color it means that has been torn away bright white represents tearing of a ligament okay keep that thing in mind now just look at another picture here you will understand everything look at this look at this femur tibia patella okay now this part which you can see here the black one this is called what what is what this should be called as what this should be called as very good pcl perfect fellows perfect Mad madhavan kuti you're right isha kaur you're right pcl then can you see a hyper intense white color lesion here hyper intense white color lesion now you tell me now you tell me guys you tell me this that this is an acl tear or a pcl tear perfect perfect inflamed and torn acl raw you are perfect this is called acl tear this is called acl tear okay this is called what acl tear look at this there is hyper intense lesion here there is hyper intense lesion here so this will be what this will be both acl as well as pcl tear this will be both acl as well as pcl tear okay fine very good tarim excellent excellent tarim right we are done guys we are almost done with the concept now so this will be your patella it means this is the anterior side right and i have already told you that we have got medial menisci we have got lateral menisci like this and surrounding that what did i tell you we have got a capsule like this this is called a synovial capsule this is called a synovial capsule you know sometimes what will happen is that uh, due to over compression or due to some other reason some other reason due to compression mostly the synovial fluid pushes on to one side okay same like a balloon guys same like a balloon you take a balloon you you compress on one side the air will go on to the other side it will bulge on the other side you compress the right side the air will shift to the left the same thing when there is a lot of fluid here and when there is a compression all the fluid goes on to the one side it goes on to one side and what will happen is that this area will pop up like this it will pop up and this popping up of this area is called as popliteal cyst popliteal cyst or it is also called baker cyst baker cyst okay so you might ask do we need to do surgery no it is self resolving it will automatically resolve by itself so this is the thing right this is the important thing you need to know okay guys all of you understood all of you understood whatever i have taught you pop cyst yes pop cyst right all of you understood right pavel pavel yes you are right pavel
थैंक यू मेड बूस्टर थैंक यू सुभाष ब्रजेश श्रीपाल थैंक यू सो मच वेनेला थैंक यू राइट सो आई विल बी टीचिंग बोथ यस आई विल बी टीचिंग यू माइक्रोबायोलॉजी आई विल ऑल्सो बी टीचिंग यू एनाटमी ओके आई विल बी टीचिंग यू बोथ ऑफ दैम आई विल कवर अप ऑल द बैक्टीरिया एंड एवरीथिंग आई शेल कवर अप एवरीथिंग डोंट वरी अबाउट दैट so you understood you understood everything right your comments are a little bit delay for me vina vinayak trivedi yes uh, not only ukrainian students right i'll i'll make for everyone i'll make the series for everyone don't worry about that the telegram this week itself we are creating a telegram group okay the moment we create it uh, so far live lectures whatever i have taken i'll post those uh, telegram groups in the live uh, in in the comments down which you have given so that you can have an access there and there uh, all the notes will be there don't worry about that okay right guys yeah okay fine so we shall close this topic by discussing the last one the last one isha isha kora has asked me about the venous supply uh, just 10 minutes i want all of you to be with me for 10 minutes guys i i want all of you to be with me for 10 minutes i shall just fatafat finish this venous supply as well very fastly this is your thigh okay this is your thigh this is your patella and this is your leg and you have got you have got your beautiful toe fingers like this right 1 2 3 4 5 6 you know people even have six fingers that is not a matter right all of you don't write anything don't write anything see whatever uh, view which you can see here this is called as an anterior view okay anterior view on the anterior view this is called dorsal this is called ventral so right now on the foot i'm going to draw a line that is the line which i am drawing on a dorsal side okay so this is the line which i'm drawing on a dorsal side now this this is called as dorsal venous arc what is this called this is called as dorsal venous arch dorsal venous arch okay there are two veins that drain into this dorsal venous arch look here look here one vein is coming like this from the medial side this is called as medial malleolus vein one vein which is coming from the lateral side this is called as lateral malleolus vein what is this called medial malleolus vein lateral malleolus vein they are draining into what they are draining into your dorsal venous arch okay now dorsal venous arch dorsal venous arch will continue like this look here dorsal venous arch will continue and drain into another vein okay i think it would be better if i put multiple colors dorsal venous arch is draining into this pink color vein so this pink color vein is called as great saphenous vein greater saphenous vein greater saphenous vein dorsal venous arch dorsal venous arch is draining into greater saphenous vein very good roy uh, dr navin r your ms ortho i am not ms ortho so it is draining into greater saphenous vein right next next important thing is that uh, dorsal venous arch also drains into another vein look here it is also draining into another vein if i tell greater saphenous vein on the other hand it will be smaller saphenous vein smaller saphenous vein if it is greater saphenous vein it will also be smaller saphenous vein right now what what are the important things important things will come now look here here i have got a vein like this okay here i have got a vein like this this vein is on the tibia region 
This vein is on the tibia region. So can I call this vein as tibial vein? Tibial vein, isn't it? Now, this tibial vein drains into an other vein. Now you will tell me where this vein is and what, what vein can I call it as? You will tell me now. What, what, what is the location where this tibial vein is draining into? Tibial vein is draining into a small vein that is located at the popliteal region and this vein is called as? Excellent, excellent. It is popliteal vein. Popliteal vein. After that, after that, we call it popliteal vein, yes. After that, this popliteal vein will drain into another vein like this. This is called as femoral vein. Same like arteries guys. Same like arteries. This is called femoral vein. Femoral vein. And you know the same thing again. Same thing again. You have got a ligament. That is called inguinal ligament. Right? Now this femoral vein. Femoral vein will drain into this particular vein called as inter external iliac vein. This is called what? External iliac vein okay so when when there is external iliac vein we have also got another vein coming from this side that will be internal iliac vein external and internal iliac vein together form a vein this is called what common iliac vein what is this called common iliac vein common iliac vein on the right side common iliac vein on the left side both of them join together and form your inferior vena cava. Your inferior vena cava. So, inferior vena cava, common iliac vein, external iliac vein, femoral vein, popliteal vein, tibial vein. Okay. Sir, you told me about uh, small saphenous vein. You told me about great saphenous vein. You just have left, you just have left these veins like that. Are these veins ended up like that or are these veins in, uh, draining into something? Yes. You know, greater saphenous vein, greater saphenous vein actually drains into femoral vein. Greater saphenous vein drains into femoral vein. And, and whereas this smaller saphenous vein, smaller saphenous vein, it drains into your tibial vein. Okay. Greater saphenous vein is draining into femoral vein. And smaller saphenous vein is draining into tibial vein. Right guys, so this is all regarding the venous supply, right? So did you understand, all of you, did you understand whatever I have taught today? Was this session worthy for you? Yeah? Did you make good notes? Is this session worthy for you? Did you understand everything whatever I have taught today? Right guys, thank you Isha, thank you Nitesh, Roy, thank you so much, Ashta Rajpal, Sanyasi Pandit, Roy, Venela, all of you, thank you so much. Thank you all of you, right, so in the next session, um, mostly we shall be discussing the, thank you Divedi, Mritunjai Divedi, thank you so much, yes. Sure, Dr. Bendik, we shall be running these sessions continuously, okay? We shall do an anatomy session, then a micro session, then anatomy, then micro. So we shall try to complete as soon as possible all the sessions. We shall be discussing only those things which are very, very important, right? But, uh, you know, even I'm trying to teach you the basics because all, all the weavers, all my weavers, might not know basics so some of them are very good at basics but some of them might not know basics for that reason i'm discussing basics for everyone right so this might be helpful for you right right guys so thank you so much and uh, goodbye